I know you all have questions about the recent disaster which took place less than a week ago, as well as all we know about now due to this unfortunate event. I am sure most of you are aware of this event, but for those of you who are unaware, let me recap. A few weeks ago, we received an anonymous tip regarding an ab abandoned area filled with dragons and monsters of all sorts. The report classified these dragons as Mortiferum class beasts, one of the highest levels of danger we have, reserved for such beasts as the Skeleton King Wyvern and Wardu. Immediately, we sent out a group of dragon keepers in order to capture the dragons or kill if necessary. I, myself, led the excursion. As soon as we arrived, I immediately noticed something about the area was off. We were told little about what terrain the dragons resided in, but I thought the fact that they all resided within a large castle would have been significant enough to note. When we arrived, we parked our dragon mounts, and I unsheathed my blade, ready for what, what was to come at me. Well, almost ready. The castle was on an island with a large bridge to the mainland. However, as soon as we crossed the bridge, it was destroyed, seemingly by itself. I had recommended that we park our dragons on the island, but was voted against as we didn't want our mounts to be hurt. As we went inside, heed, I was about to tell them I told them so, when a large amorphous serpentine dragon came running at us. It was entirely black and covered with eyes, though one was predominantly in the middle of its head. Due to these reasons, and the fact that I always appreciate alliteration, I dubbed it the Seeking Slime Serpent. It immediately attacked, lunging at me and my group. I was about to inform the group that our melee weapons would likely do nothing, but I did not speak quick enough. A few of the dragon keepers tried to stab through the dragon with their blades, but the blades simply lodged themselves into the creature. They tried to pull their weapons from the beast, but it had little effect. The creature devoured quite a few of my comrades, and I was unsure of what to do. I summoned a few balls of green fire that I hoped might do something to the creature, but once again it had no effect. Eventually I lost all hope and left, taking the remaining dragon keepers with me. Truthfully, I had expected the Seeking Slime Serpent to follow us, but strangely it didn't. As soon as we exited the room, it simply stopped and stood at the barrier, staring at us. I closed the door and continued walking, leading my party onward. I was planning on telling the group to stick together, but it was soon not going to be my choice. As we went through more and more doors, we were attacked by dragons in every room. And these dragons were unlike any I'd ever seen. Some were phantasmal, being transparent and looking almost unfinished. During our trek through the building, we lost more and more dragon keepers, as these dragons were very unlike any we had encountered previously. Many of these dragons even seemed to be invulnerable, with our blades and magic not affecting them in the slightest. The walls of the castle were covered in strange drawings and markings, and we often found notes covered in the same strange symbols. The castle itself was a maze, with doors not even leading to the next logical room, often leading to rooms completely unconnected. For the purposes of these lectures, however, the most dangerous aspect of these doors was even if your group walked through said door at the same time, it was unlikely you would all exit out of the same exit point. Hence, our group was quickly split up. Soon I found myself alone in a large underground chamber, I saw a light source in the distance and followed it, hoping it might lead to an exit. However, it was merely light reflecting off a pile of gold. I walked closer to it and unsheathed my blade, knowing that a pile of gold often meant a dragon was nearby. And I was right. From underneath the gold pile, a red dragon surfaced. It was fairly small as dragons went, had a long nose, and had a fairly goblin-like appearance. But the strangest factor was that it spoke. It greeted me in broken English and asked who I was and what I was doing. I quickly explained and asked who it was, but it didn't respond, simply pointing at his pile of gold. I was confused at first, but then took it to mean that he would only talk if I gave him gold. Gold. Luckily, I was carried a few gold coins for emergencies and threw them into the pile. 
The Red Dragon began to tell me his backstory and what had happened to this place. I sat down next to a skeleton wearing a blue helmet, and the red dragon began to tell his story. The dragon had once been a human named El Goblino, and he worked for the Beast Hunters. The Beast Hunters are our rival group, who act similar to us, but pretty much always kill their targets. Either way, this castle had apparently been a Beast Hunter fortress, but apparently the Beast Hunters had been trying to replicate the powers of a monster morph. If you are not aware, monster morphs are humans who are born with the ability to transform into some sort of creature. However, the species and usefulness of these transformations vary from case to case, and most monster morphs are either killed or shunned into keeping their ability secret. However, beast hunters had noticed the power of these unique few and sought to replicate it. Using demonic powers, they tried to give several humans the ability to turn into dragons, including El Goblino. However, they failed drastically. Even the dragons that fully transformed often went mad, turning fully into the dragon instincts. Many of the dragons killed were their many dragons killed their former friends, who weren't willing to attack their own allies. Eventually, the castle was laid to waste, leaving only the dragons that currently roamed the castle unable to leave. After the story, the red dragon fell asleep. However, before falling into slumber, it gave me a strange wooden crucifix. I saw now that this whole excursion had been a lost cause and that there was no good way for us to take down this threat, at least not yet. But none of that mattered now. What mattered was my escape. However, the castle was a seemingly endless labyrinth, and even if I were to escape, the bridge had collapsed, cutting off our connection to the mainland and our dragon mounts. So, as I saw it, I only had one option. An option I had hoped never to reveal. Using the abilities I'd have since birth, my... I transformed into a mighty dragon. My skin hardened to a silvery green, wings grew from my back. I transformed to a jade-scaled dragon, a species known for its durable hide. I flew into the air, intending on leaving the island. However, I was knocked from the sky by another dragon, this one seemingly made of pure muscles and bones. I quickly noticed that it had no eyes, meaning it may have been blind. At first, I simply tried to sneak around it. However, the flapping of my loud wings made this near impossible. The creature flew at me, and its maw began to glow with an orange light. With a lack of options, I threw the crucifix at the dragon, half expecting it to be a harmless extraction. How however, suddenly, a blue circle appeared on the ground beneath the creature, and glowing blue chains erupted from the ground, ensnaring the beast. I took the opportunity and flew away, taking the dragon mounts with me. I was the only dragon keeper to return. We do not know as of yet if any of the remaining dragon keepers are still alive, and any suggestions for a possible rescue mission would be much appreciated. <laughs>